Born on Vancouver Island, Peter Judd is an innovator and engineer who crossed the pond to work at Vancouver City Hall in 1982. In April last year, he, he replaced Tom Tim as the city's new chief engineer, and it is my pleasure to welcome chief engineer Peter Judd to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you for having me on the show. Mm -hmm. So I hear you were quite a tinkerer when you were younger. A tinkerer. I got into yes, a tinkering, tinkering very early. Mm -hmm. And sort of thinking back on why, I think it was actually my mother's influence. She was, you know, if we needed something, she would build it. Really? She Could did she like yeah. build a porch? She would build a porch. She built a garage. If we needed furniture, she would build furniture. And really? It, and so I guess I kind of. Mm -hmm. She got, taught you how to pound her. a nail. But what she about did. the visionary part of you, the structural part of you, uh, knowing how to build an airplane, for instance? Because I heard a rumor. You tried to build an airplane in your condo or your apartment. Well, Fanny, I, I didn't expect to finish it in the apartment. <laughs> I did start it in the apartment, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I flew that for many years. A, 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 a light plane? Light yes, aircraft? A little Not two a Cessna seater. 172 or anything. I was, it was nearly that size. It was a two-seat mm -hmm. airplane and, and built of fiberglass and carbon fiber. So it was a great mm. little airplane. Mm. But um, I had some close calls with it and uh, <laughs> eventually parked it. Right. Well, that's okay. It's, you know, in your past. Now, mm -hmm. this job of yours, this, this fairly new job of yours, uh, what's the mandate? Uh, Vancouver's city chief engineer does what? Well, engineering is, is all about transportation planning and sewers and, and water and those basic things that, that a city has to have. And um, I think my role right now is, is really to continue building on, on what past city engineers mm -hmm. and past councils have been doing to position the city for a future where, um, where um, we have we, less oil, where we can't rely on the automobile necessarily to get ourselves around, but to build a city that can be economically viable and thrive in that kind of environment. Okay, so now that we have some separated bike lanes in the city, some we are uh, uh, looking at to see if they work, some not. I'm not quite sure how that wor works. They say six months trial will let you know. What, how do you fit into that? Do you, do you plan where they go? Do you, are you in charge of the safety or how they're built? How does it work? Well, way back in 1997, the Council of the Day approved a transportation plan. Mm. And you've got to kind of step back and look at the big picture. And the big picture is we aren't going to be building any more roads. There isn't room for more roads. So we are not going to be able to accommodate growth in, in number of trips through the single occupant vehicle. Mm -hmm. And councils have recognized that over the years and said, okay, if we can't do that, in order for the city to grow, and be economically viable, we have to accommodate trips through, through alternative modes, through transit largely, but also through walking and cycling. So coming back to bike lanes, bike lanes are part of that. And the, the bike lanes that we built in this past year in, in the downtown, the Dunsmere bike lane and the Hornby bike lane, that's all about making it comfortable for people that want to ride bikes but, but aren't that comfortable in traffic. It's finding a way for them to get into the downtown to, to get mm. to their jobs there. Okay, is it that much safer with the barrier? Would a line, I know a lot of them have those little, in engineering talk, mm -hmm. you know, the cement barrier, as yeah. opposed to just a line. Right. So obviously you must have done a safety study or something to suggest that we need to protect the bikes that much more. Fanny, it's, it's not so much about about whether it's safer or not safer. Okay. It's more about people's perceptions. And the fact is that, uh, that someone with their kids feels safer behind mm -hmm. a barrier and will, uh, will bring their bike downtown mm -hmm. to go to an event down here at the, across the road here at the convention center. Um, people will, will try cycling that wouldn't necessarily try it with just a painted line. That's the big difference. Okay, and, and we're still testing some of them. Is that true? Like that is the true. six month trial, is somebody counting? And uh, worst case scenario for probably a city engineer, they decide that that Hornby bike lane, eight people use it a day, not enough, we don't need it, then what happens? 
Well, first of all, I mean, there, there is an impression that they're, that they're not temporary because we tried to build with them with some aesthetic value mm -hmm. and with planters and so on. Uh, the fact is they are. That, that's the basis on which council approved them. It is a trial. One of the things that we're doing is, is a bit of an economic study to see if there's a difference uh, to the retailers along those bike lanes. Mm -hmm. So some of that information will come in, the usage will come in, we'll look at what the impacts are on, on other traffic, and council may well decide that they want to change them or, or they want to take them out. I mean, that, that's a decision that, that council can make but they'll be making it in an informed way with some, some actual real information mm -hmm. on, on how they have functioned and what the impacts are. Right. Is your job to put the crews together, to put the staff together, to decide when they, I know there are limits when they can work and certain hours they can work, that kind of thing, that part of a city engineer's job, or is there somebody doing that? Well, that all falls under the Underneath. city engineer, yeah. Mm. It's, I mean, the organization has 1,800 people, so okay. it's... Uh, it's a lot of people, a lot of very creative people. Um, I, I want to say that because a big part of what I do is not, you know, you talk about the specifics of designing and so on. I mean, my job is really to unleash the potential of those 1,800 people and, and um, so that they can function the best way that sure. they can. Sure, whether it's about a garbage bin right. or a, a sewer problem, a tree problem. I'm sure you have tree problems in Vancouver. Right. Tree you know, challenges. Tree Shane. challenges. They're, they're okay. Challenges. Well, you know, Boulevard been there for uh, 100 <laughs> years. Beautiful trees. Somebody wants the boulevard gone. Somebody wants the boulevard there. And at some point, you have to come in and either take it out, or not. That's an in interesting that you raise trees because that's sort of a fundamental tension between mm -hmm. building a, a public environment that people want to be in and people want to walk in versus just building functional infrastructure that lasts a long time and mm -hmm. trees are a great example because um, because if you've walked in any of our residential neighborhoods you'll see the sidewalks get heaved up by tree roots and mm -hmm. um, but you know what it's not one or the other it's to have a, a, a public realm to have an environment that people want to walk around in you need the trees you need sure. the sidewalk you need all of those things mm -hmm. and you just have to make it all work together Sure, I understand, and the City Hall complaint is there is a crack in my sidewalk. There's a bump in my sidewalk. I'm afraid I'm going to trip, but don't take the tree out. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Right? That's right, and there are creative ways to get around that. I bet there are. Peter Jett, our guest, he is the Chief Engineer for the City of Vancouver.